John here guys and today we're talking about the Runcam Phoenix 2 Nano. This is yet another in a long line of very popular and very impressive camera releases and of course Nano seems to be the place to be if you're a new camera these days and that's because you can accommodate any size build from small micro like this tadpole three inch all the way up to a full size five inch six inch seven inch build uh, with the included adapters now i suppose if you wanted to run a full size camera mount you'd have to daisy chain multiple adapters but that's okay in the box it comes with your standard you know the camera the connectors the hardware and this little flimsy adapter i really like the harder ones that um foxier and caddix are using compared to this um but this is a 1000 tv line camera but most notably uh included is the one half inch size sensor that's right this gives you an m8 lens so when you open up the phoenix nano 2 you are greeted to the regular run cam stuff this little flexi uh adapter that goes to micro a few random pieces of screws but most notably is this tiny little connector that's right this connector doesn't go into the back like you might expect um that we've seen on any other fpv camera since the dawn of time no this comes into the top and this is the tiniest the flimsiest the most delicate connector that i have seen anywhere in the history of connectors anywhere now on the other ends you have your standard um, three pin camera connection and your two pin camera controller connection it does not come with a controller um, but that's okay because if you've been flying fpv you probably have dozens of those but what is really concerning though is the fact that i just i just don't know what they're thinking here why would they come up with this ridiculous connector this ridiculous non-standard connector that is so thin and it doesn't come out through the back it comes to the top meaning that you're really gonna have to think about what frame you're selecting to throw this in and it is so breakable in this position right here it's just absolutely ridiculous now i know on some smaller builds you may have um a little close proximity to the stack here in the back and maybe that's the reason they decided to go in through the top but uh i just can't really make any sense out of this decision here uh to use this connector it's just horrific that they have decided to do this it's really hard to get it in there it's it's a little confusing on which side goes to which you really just have to look at the legend to see that you know power goes on the left so you're always gonna have it on the left but when you get it in there i just i don't like that um so i'm probably gonna install this in one of my diatone cubes because i like testing nano cameras on those and it actually does have a little bit of protection as long as you have something with a nice pod or something like that where this is not going to get yanked in any way you're probably going to be all right but it's just an annoyance one more non-standard camera connector that if you ever lose this or it gets damaged you're pretty much screwed 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 so Bad job on that run cam. And it essentially at 2.1 millimeter lens size gives you 155 degree field of view, which is perfect for anything from small micros up to full size. And the thing that I actually like the most about this camera is that it probably has the most true to life color palette of any camera we've seen to late there are a lot of reasons why you might go with one of the others but i think going into 2020 the two best cameras are going to be the toothless the two best cameras are going to be the toothless nano 2 starlight 
and this one, the Phoenix 2. Um, if you want a little bit better night performance, you may want to go with the Toothless Xeno 2, but if you want the best color rendition, um, I think you would go with this one. It is a beautiful sort of electron blue pearl, uh, like my old 99 Honda Civic SI was. It's a beautiful color. And uh, the lens notably does sit a bit proud. So you can see on this Tadpole build, even though this has an adjustable camera mount, it sticks very far forward. So you're really reducing some of that camera protection with this lens, but it's kind of worth it because of the image that you get. This has really come my camera testing rig. So we'll show you some care comparison against that Toothless Nano 2 Starlight. We'll show you some comparison against the Cadex Kangaroo. We'll show you some pair comparison against the Racer Nano 2, which I think is probably the best camera for racing. But it's unmistakable that these cameras have an incredible image. Now, what does that mean for 2020? Uh, I think if you're going to be building up a micro or a freestyle rig, it's down to those two. And I really, really like that both of those have kind of fallen in the mid camera price range. At the low end, we have about $18 to $20, like the Run Cam Nano 2. At the very high end, you have like the Racer Nano 2, the Predator Nano 4, or all the way up to those cat things that are almost 50 bucks. Come on, this is a analog camera, guys. What's going on with the pricing? But this is right smack dab in the middle at a comfortable, affordable, but yet still premium $30. So what do you think in the comments, guys? What camera are you primarily going with for 2020? Uh, both of these have been somewhat difficult to get a hold of, but finally stock is being replenished. Um, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the better true to life color palette or do you prefer a little bit of um, Foxier's highly saturated look that they give, but maybe slightly better at the night. Um, although this one actually does still pretty good. Um, thanks, guys.